1995, six teenagers headed to a distant planet to get the ancient power they needed to stop Ivan Ooze from taking over Angel Grove. Now, 25 years later, I am beyond honored to welcome the cast of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie! Go, go, Power Rangers! What would you guys say is the question that you get asked the most? Favorite color. Do you still keep in contact? We get that one a lot. Did anyone date in real life? Donnie and I dated for a while, but it didn't work out. <laughs> Do you think a reunion on screen could happen someday? I'll be honest with you, Ashley. Johnny, have you heard that story? No, actually, I did not. Oh, I know. We're all sitting here like glued to the Zoom <laughs> I know, we're loving it. I'm Steve Cardenas. I played Rocky, uh, the Red Power Ranger. I'm Karen Ashley. I played Aisha, the Yellow Power Ranger. I'm Jason David Frank. White Tiger. And I played Tommy, the White Ranger. And I'm Jason Andrew Narvi. I played Skull. Who's in charge around here, huh? <laughs> I played Amy Jo Johnson. Oh wait, I'm Amy Jo Johnson. I played Kimberly. <laughs> Hi, Amy. You, you look Changed. different. Yeah. <laughs> a little different. You obviously don't know who you're dealing with. And I'm Ash Crossland. I'm a producer and host for ET Online, and a lifelong Power Ranger fan. I'll be your moderator. This is such an honor. Thank you guys so much for coming. What's Hi. up? How's it going? It's been 25 years since the premiere of this movie. What do you guys remember most? It was one of the only daytime premieres because it was a kid's the kids one. All the kids came, you know, and the, the celebrities brought their kids to to uh, to the premiere. So I thought that was interesting that it was during the day and not at night. Carnival. That's interesting you remember that. Yeah? <laughs> Did you think it was at think night? So, Karen, do you remember that? I do, I do. I remember um, I, I was super excited because my, my whole family flew from Texas and they were able to come to the actual premiere. But I just remember being so nervous because we'd seen it ourselves. We'd seen the movie, I think, one other time at like a press junket. But to have like your friends and family sitting in the audience looking at it. Yeah, they had like a whole big event after that too. The big yeah. Stuff, yeah. I still have my ticket. It's so funny. A, a really close friend of mine sent me a box of goodies and, and one of the things was a, a ticket to the actual premiere. And somehow cool. I still have that. It's crazy. That's so cool. I just found a VIP tag from the movie. You know, the press kit, the press kit from different languages. I found all that stuff. And going through my house remodeling and everything's popping up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my it's god! So crazy. Who's there? Johnny, Johnny. Late to the party, but joining us now we have Johnny Young Bosch, aka Adam Park, the Black Ranger. Festival. How you doing? I don't really yeah. know if you guys can hear me. Is this thing? Yeah, here? we hear you. Yeah. you. Oh, we're so excited. Sorry, I, uh, I was dog. up late rendering files, and then I uh, my son woke me up and <laughs> needed like a thousand things done, and then uh, I finally got my manager started texting me. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. What would you guys say is the question that you get asked the most at conventions? Favorite color? Still keep in contact. Yeah, do you still yeah, keep in contact? Yeah, we get that one a lot. Um, I, you guys uh, hang out. <laughs> yeah, my my character was written out of the second movie, and um, that's when I exited the show. But they did it through a sequence where I, I fell out of the boxing ring and injured Next myself. Thing. Maybe we're not trying hard enough. <laughs> People still come up and say like, "Is your back okay?" Like, like they think <laughs> I really got hurt. You know what I mean? And that's why I left the show and left the movie. So uh, they thought it, that, that that's always pretty funny. Do you like green or white? That's the most common question I get. And then I say green, they're like, sorry, I'm a White Ranger fan. I'm like, that's still me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So I do get that a lot. Why, why do you like have green space and it's loaded unfair? Loaded question, you know? <laughs> Such they do ask question. us all the time, like they want to know, are we friends in real life? Do we hang out? I think for them, it's like, it was such a moment in their childhood that they can't imagine that, you know, we have to all be friends. Like, don't ruin that for us. You guys all have to like hang out. And, and the cool thing is when we're in the same city or we go to a Comic-Con, we totally do. We grab dinner, we, you know, have a drink. We, you know, talk about, we talk about everything other than Power Rangers. We talk about our lives, and, mm -hmm. but we just, you know, we have fun. But we, I can say that we honestly all have our own, you know, separate friendships with each other. We used to talk a lot in the text and we might not see each other because we're all in separate towns, you know? And uh, just like now, people are probably wondering why all these people aren't on it. Maybe it's just time schedules. That's what happens in Comic-Cons too. Is Comic-Cons almost not, not anymore, but they have like, you know, 100 of them a month. 
So mm -hmm. it's really just the time scheduling. When's the last time you guys watched the movie? Do you feel like it holds up? I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we watch it several times. Some, sometimes, you know, when we do these conventions, um, sometimes um, we'll have like these Q and A panels that we'll do with the fans, or these like commentaries that we'll do, where the the they'll show the movie, and then you know, we'll kind of like stop and talk about different scenes from the movie, or have like a big question and answer panel afterwards. So yeah, we've seen the movie many times since then, or at least I have. You know what, I, I, I haven't watched it a lot, but it, like Steve said, we've been able to relive the movie, relive the series, just because we do a lot of Comic-Cons. And Comic-Cons, it's kind of like every weekend we become Power Rangers again, and we get to just meet the fans. And now they're adults. So it's like, I almost feel like I like it better this way because I see it through their eyes. Like they tell me like how they, they love certain scenes. Kiss the makeup. makes me just remember things I probably wouldn't remember doing 25 years ago. But it's really, really cool. We travel all around the world meeting them and, and we kind of relive it through them. Oh my gosh. I, I remember, um, Jason David Frank, when I was a kid, you came to my karate studio in Wilmington, Delaware, and you asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up and I, I still beat myself up about this because for some reason I said a dentist, which was a lie and I just made it up <laughs> when I said that. Yeah. Delaware. Was that uh, David Deaton's or Jim Clapp? Jim Clapp's. Jim Clapp's. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> so you, I, I, I do remember. still my Facebook friend. <laughs> I, I, that's crazy. I do remember telling each kid, all right, everyone stay, stand up and say, I can, sir. What do you want to be when you're a kid, when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I remember lots of people say, ninja or doctor <laughs> obviously you're not a dentist it's good that you're here ashley um, <laughs> it makes me super old that i taught you at your karate school but uh hey uh, just like, give him an answer <laughs> that's awesome look at frank still, eight today, man. still running things there frank still running the team there baby <laughs> uh, so many years after right uh, right it's oh, a whole generation wow it's interesting to watch the original movie like you know 25 years out you got to think about it. There's not a lot of superhero teams that are coming out live action at that point. Right. So it is interesting to see Hollywood and Hollywood directors try to figure out how to make a team happen. You know, I, I think we could pride our crew on at that point, getting it down, figuring out how to get all these different people to have a unified message, but still maintain their individuality. You work as a team, but everybody has the moment to shine. And our television unit had figured it out. So it's interesting now to watch an Avengers movie to see they got it down, they got it down. But in Power Ranger times, you know, people don't give Power Rangers a lot of credit because it's a kid's movie, but they were really seriously trying to figure out what it's like when people come together and together right. they're stronger. And I think that's yeah. how Power Rangers, even back then, was able to deal with diversity in a way uh. that the rest of the superhero movies are still kind of catching up with, you know? Yeah, yeah. head of its curve. Oh, and it looks like I, the news himself, is joining us right now, Paul Freeman. Oh, oh my Freeman. God. Oh! 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 The ooze. Oh, what's <laughs> the ooze. The ooze is back, ladies and gentlemen. The ooze is back. <laughs> but back, but almost not. I, I, it was very late. I thought it was tomorrow night. Great to see you guys. You oh, all look you. wonderful. You're looking great. Dude, the beard looks beautiful. No, the beard's all right. The hair's gone a bit wild, but I'm, I'm not brave enough to go to a hairdresser yet. <laughs> Me neither. Paul, it's been 25 years since the release of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. Um, mm -hmm. Have you gone back and watched it at all? Like, what are your, what are your fondest memories from the set? Ooh, no, I haven't watched it. Um, the fondest memories? I think just, um, you know, I had a lot of really good experiences with these guys and it, it was it was all fun. I don't remember. There was a bit of pain when I twisted an ankle and um, <laughs> the costume got a bit difficult from time to time. But apart from that, it was all fun. I can't imagine the makeup. You were, you were hours in makeup every day, weren't you? Yeah, like oh. that was, yeah, yeah. That's oh. gotta be I found grueling. a way to cope with that with between alcohol and cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Atta boy, nice. Paul, do you keep in touch with these guys? Uh, I, I see Jason and Paul Shire quite often at the, the meals. At the, the meals. <laughs> it's the last thing you think about on those um, Comic Cons is the food. No, uh, <laughs> at, at Comic Cons we meet up. And I've seen Karen a few times and Johnny. 
Yeah, well, I, we, I saw you too at, at Power oh, Morphicon. Yes, we, yeah. Where were we? At, at, at Power Morphicon. Um, we had, we, our tables were right across from each other when the right. fans were coming up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was Paul, thinking... we were so excited when you joined the cast. <laughs> we were really excited about it. Yeah. 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 I like, Bella, I like Indiana Jones is going to be on the cast. Years. That's so cool. <laughs> it was a very strange script when I first joined. He he was he turned into the ooze all the time, and was, <laughs> he was changing sex and becoming animals and things like that. All of that yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. Went out the way. So um, when when Paul joined the cast, you guys remember how you reacted? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We we were told Paul Freeman was going to be the battery. We're like, oh. Oh, yeah. oh my God, you gotta be Bella! You know, Belosh. Do you realize what the art is? It's a transmitter. It's a radio for speaking to God. Paul's resume is, you know, longer than this phone call. Um, yeah. So we're just ecstatic to see him. But that's the thing we knew about Paul when they, when they, when they hired him, you know, is he was an actor's actor. So there's, <laughs> there's a certain part of us that's super excited. And that's yeah. also a little bit intimidating when you get somebody that that's that good is going to be opposite you, you know? Like, yeah. oh my God, I'm a fraud. This guy is real. Yeah. No uh, <laughs> you're too kind. Yeah, I remember uh, when we did we did our first scene together when we all met up for the first time in that construction site thing. I remember that being nervous about that, you know what I mean? Because like this guy here's like this is a real actor, and I'm just some kid from Texas who'd never been in front of a camera before in his life, and a month later, being in you know in this movie, and uh, so I, you know. But uh, Paul was actually really gracious, you know, with with all of us, you know. So um, that was that w I was always appreciative of that. So thank you for that. Well, you all. Paul, I have a question I for you. I was amazed at how well you all handled it because it was a lot oh, of work and a lot of hard work too. I mean, we had fun, but it was hard work. Yeah, and was. hot, wasn't it, in that pit? I remember. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was. Hot. It was like you know, like, like November, October, November, which is the summer in Australia. So yeah, it was hot. So did you guys go through that phase where you're like? man, like, I don't want to be tied to Power Rangers forever. And then when did you shift to embracing it and, and embracing the fans? After I had left the show, um, you know, I was running martial arts studios. I didn't want to have anything to do with Power Rangers anymore, you know? Um, and back then, you, you know, there wasn't social media, you know, all the fans were pretty young and there was no other platform for them to communicate with us either. It wasn't until 2007 when somebody reached out to me and said, we're going to be putting together this convention called Power Morphicon. Fans are going to come in from all over the world that are fans of just Power Rangers. And would you come and be a part of it? It's in L.A. So, yeah, I showed up and did it. And when I showed up, I remember there were like 800 people just standing in the lobby. And when I walked past them all, they all started applauding. And that's when I realized I'm like, wow, this is like 15 years later. And these fans like are still stoked on Power Rangers. It's cool. And then a couple years later, Jason Frank reached out to me and was like, dude, you got to start doing these conventions because fans are wanting to meet you. And, you know, he's like, I can help you get started with all that. And then next thing you know, we're touring like full time. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I have totally embraced it again. How about you, Karen? You know, it's the same thing. We left the show and we had an opportunity to kind of live life, you know, and, and thankfully there was no social media or anything like that to kind of um, pull you back in. So like Steve said, we started meeting all these fans. We started doing these conventions and it's like, we have a unique experience of being able to fall back in love with what you did. And it was just a beautiful thing to meet all these people. It was really eye opening. People would come up to me and, and, and would just say, I've never seen anyone that looked like me on TV. And you, you know, you were, you were just that person. And, and for me, Power Rangers never talked about race, but it was a multicultural show. And it's been around for 25 plus years. And there's always been every different race, every different kind of kid, the girl next door, the smart guy, the, you know, the, the sassy black girl. I mean, there's everyone on that show. So every kid had someone they could identify with. And we all were heroes. We weren't just, you know, uh, one person got to save the day. We all got to save the day. It's it's a cool thing to say I was a part of something like that, and people still love it. It's yeah. still current. It is shocking yeah. how much this this cheesy little show actually had its heart in the right place. Special effects never age well. Superhero <laughs> movies never age well. But again, you did have you had this these multicultural heroes. You know, uh, people don't talk about this a lot, but. Karen 
and, and Walt were really the first African-American live action superheroes. It just didn't exist, you know? So Power Rangers was looking ahead when it comes to that. When they're in the demographic of three to six, that is a powerful message that we want right now. Who would yeah. have thought little little cheap show would be on the right side of this? <clears throat> to answer the question, I, I, I enjoyed doing what I did. I think everyone did, but I think also, you know, the character Tommy had a little bit more leeway with producers and executives. That's why I kept going back. They, we all had a choice, but uh, I think my biggest thing, people used to come up and say, are you afraid of being stereotyped? And I'd say no. And I thought for us, it was like the movie stood on its own. And I was, and I was a karate teacher. So it was one of those challenges to embrace it and go back to Dino Thunder when I could not get an interview. They kept saying, oh, you're still part of that show. Uh, why don't you, uh, you know, uh, you let it go. I'm not letting it go because we're heroes for people. And it's not about being a superhero. It's about listening to people and really making a difference. And it's the truth. Let's do it, guys. Right. It's Morphin time. You talk about us being part of, of, of your childhood. Look, this really was our late adolescence, mm -hmm. you know? And this is one of those reasons why, of course, when you're an actor, you want to move on to the next thing. You don't want to rest on your laurels, like, like Jason Frank was saying. You want to be in the next room and see what the next adventure is. But like it or not, this is our family. We grew up together. We had a strange moment where we were speaking to young kids and, well, at least youth were playing their heroes. I was their anti-hero for crying out loud. I was the what not to do in that cast. Probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was the what not to do. But that, but we, we bonded as a family because we are part of each other's history. And the young people that grew up with this show, we grew up with you guys as well. Now the world's looking at us. Can we just be, hey, we're playing actors or do we have a responsibility to do better as individuals so that the people watching can become better individuals and grow, you know? That's kind of how I look at it. Yeah, I, I agree. Vulcan Soul have an arc where they become Power Rangers at some point? In, in the comic book, they do. Okay. You know, Bulk and Soul always try other ways to become heroes. And again, if you today that is the thing that would change. They become junior cops, you know? <laughs> they become detectives, you know? They, they do things that they think will make them um, famous in the eyes of their fellow man, but always for the wrong reasons, just because they want to say, <laughs> You were right. You were crazy, you know? You always have the wrong reasons to be heroes, you know? And now we have Skull's other half bulk joining us, Paul Schreier. Hey, let's go of me! I want my mommy! Hey, everybody. Sorry I'm late. I was making some donuts. Now, Paul Schreier was my acting coach when I first got on the show because I had never done anything before. So Paul was always like the one that was like off camera telling me to say how to say stuff and helping me with my lines in the script. So <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> no, I just said, move your neck when you speak. <laughs> move my neck. <laughs> we need ranger power now. I remember yeah. that. I remember, yeah, yeah. saying that. <laughs> it's It's been 25 years since the movie came out. What sticks out to you the most about that experience? Just how remarkably lucky me and my colleagues were to have been associated with what can only be described as a worldwide insane phenomenon. It was like being a member of the Beatles. I mean, as an actor, so few of us get to have any success and, and, and success is not predicated upon ability. It's more of a roll of the dice and chance and perhaps nepotism, <laughs> but, um, for us, we were super lucky and I just feel blessed. And I've met some of the most remarkable souls and uh, and, and boy, we got a great group, truly. Uh, True. Well spoken, Polly. I was I was talking to uh, Jason about how you guys were supposed to have a spinoff at one point. That's true. Uh, we were monkeys and, uh, and that was working <laughs> out well for us. Yeah. I, I never realized until looking back that you guys really had like a Laurel and Hardy thing going on. Well, oh, yeah. Marvin could have eaten more, you know, but. That was one of the spinoff ideas, the young Laurel and Hardy, till they found out Hal Roach's grandchildren don't want to give it up. Not for us. Have you ever wanted to put Power Rangers behind you? And at what point did you decide to embrace it? And, and what do you love about being a part of the Power Rangers today? Well, we asked for it, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I always find it strange when uh, performers um, who, like myself, aspired for their, through their formative years to uh, to be professional performers. But once they achieve that fame, they realize there's a bitter hue and they suddenly become allergic to that thing that they quested for. 
and and so I, I absolutely embrace it because in fact in life I am an idiot and so <laughs> it, it's not a great That's leap funny. I'm gonna be the ego yeah. be the swallow <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, I'm proud of my work you know I played a moron so um, I'm able to go out into the world and, and, and people see me buying a loaf of bread and they're impressed. They, they realize I'm functional. You're a high functioning <laughs> moron. <laughs> they're doing a new movie. Do you think if they called you guys to be in it, would you guys all be down? Do you think a reunion on screen could happen someday? They probably won't. That's true. <laughs> just, they're so not like nostalgic. That. Like, why did you do this to me? <laughs> I was so excited to see Jason and Amy in the movie, and then I was so pissed because I was like, they deserve to have a bigger part in that plot. Like, that was the letdown for me. I think that's what that last movie kind of missed was the nostalgia. You know, they always ask, are we going to come back? Are we ever going to be re reunited? And I think if they would have just interjected some of the that old feeling or some of the, the original cast members or even just, I always call us the Mighty Morphin 10, you know, pulled people in and actually put them in the plot. You know, it might've been a little bit more closer to home. They fell in love with Power Rangers, these characters, but you have to really give credit to all of the actors. We brought those characters to life, but it's almost like they're none of these companies are nostalgic. I don't understand they're, why they're they not. keep missing the mark on that. I don't understand yeah. why they keep missing the mark. I mean, when I have all the knowledge that we have, they have all the, the same feedback that we have. I don't know why they're not doing that. The movie, me and Amy did two cameos and they tried cutting it, both of them. And the director specifically told me we are cutting all ties for Power Rangers. We want to make this a completely reboot. So if we put Day uh, Jason and Amy in the movie, it's gonna bring memories back. And the director came up at the movie premiere and said, I gotta tell you something. I'm, we spent so much money on the movie and these Zords and everything else. And we got more claps for the cheapest scene that we shot with you and Amy. And yep. we did a pickup shot. So we weren't even in the movie. People don't understand the fan base. And I'll be honest with you, Ashley, they won't until they get desperate and realize we all are carrying the brand because we keep promoting all the time around the world. They had chances of doing so many things that they just never did. And now with quarantine, they're talking about a movie. Good luck. It's going to be at least three years before and if you ever see anything, in my humble, honest opinion. What a beautiful so thing I, it would have been, though, if they would have been a part right. of the story and would have been able to, like, you know, they weren't playing Tommy or Kimberly, but playing a character that could have helped that team move forward. That would have just, it would have resonated with fans in a whole nother way. Well, many of you guys have returned to the Power Rangers. I've never, they've asked me, I've been, I've been asked a couple of times, but it just never worked out. But no, yeah. but yeah, the other guys have. So what is it like when they call you guys up? Like, you're just like, yeah, I'm down. Is it weird? Like, what, what is it, it like? It's like an episode, I think personally, a 20 minute episode is just not enough to have that. I mean, Austin's never returned. He returned back in one episode. That's that's enough. You're gonna put any more people in there. You're it, you're the fans want more. That's what I feel when I do a reunion. Who who here has been on the most episodes of Power Rangers? Paul. Probably. probably Paul, I don't know. Jason. Paul, you've been in a lot. Yeah, I got 230 something episodes. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm right at about 400 something with the Power Rangers Hyperforce stuff. How recently have you been on? Um, in 2012? No, no, no. That no, Hyperforce was, was like 15. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, you're the Yellow Ranger. Yes, I was finally tapped to play an officially authorized version of the Power Rangers in which I was the Yellow Ranger playing a different character than Farkas Bulkmeyer. I was uh, uh, Jack Dealgood Thomas, the Yellow Power Ranger. <laughs> Which is cool. Power Rangers is a very particular fan base, and you know exactly who comes to those conventions are hardcore fans that have been with us from day one. You've changed my life. I was going through a dark period, and you don't know mm -hmm. what you've done to help me. And then we have people that just come and say, hey, I had a great life, and we loved you. So Power Rangers did change lives, but we, we don't know until 20 years after it becomes a classic. I'm doing all the hard work that maybe the franchise doesn't see, but we are keeping the fans pumped and going for so many years later. People didn't give that credit to that teamwork yeah. and what we've done.
The that's movie awesome. like opened up the doors and I was just like, oh my gosh, like that's when yeah. I felt like, that was one of those moments where you were like, okay, we've made it. We've been on entertainment tonight. All of us have been waiting for this all of our lives and we've always wanted to do movies. It's a foot this. in the door. So, you know, it's like a big step for us, you yeah. know? So we're excited, very excited. Oh. We're so proud. When we meet people like you, like you're the demographic. You were five years old when this movie came out and I mean, literally, they walk up to us and everyone becomes five years old again. And it's just a, <laughs> it's just a great thing. It's like, I tell people all the time, we're in the good news business. We get to travel the world, meeting people, and we all get to become kids again. So how, how perfect is that? I have to give a shout out to Aisha Campbell, though, because she knees Ivan Ooze in the balls and propels him <laughs> to a comet. What are you doing? Taking care of business. <laughs> she was, you know what? She was thinking outside the box, you know? <laughs> always learn something new. I always say, Aisha didn't get enough credit for that. Like, she no. really, she was savage before savage was even popular. That's true. <laughs> And they took they took away the best line for her though too when they, when she did that because when she did that move in in ADR later they said balls eye and then they took it out of the movie. So when I got in ADR, they had me say balls eye, taking care of it. Like, I mean, it was like I said like thirty things, and he's right. That would have been hilarious. And now they have something exclusive content for all the people <laughs> to know. Karen, I think people would love it now and understand the fact now versus being five. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. You heard it here first. Yo, fossil head. I've got a bone to pick with you. There was like a lot of like cheesy puns in this movie, like no shortage at all. Do you guys remember like which line to you sticks out the most? When Tommy steps up and goes, we're the Power Rangers and he's all, ooh wait, where's my autograph book? We're the Power Rangers. Ooh, where's my autograph book? <laughs> yeah. Me too. I just thought that was the best line ever. The yeah. best. Yep. That was the one. To have Ooh. Paul, to have Paul Freeman, you know, who to us was a legend. Good God. And Jason, you were saying that you are a hero to, and, and you and Paul, because I think everyone needs that comic relief. Everybody needs to get away from real yeah. life. That's and, the one. you know, you follow the story, and then bam, it throws you off, and it makes you smile. You guys really brought, uh, you know, uh, laughter. And, and happiness to the story. I really Thanks. believe that. And uh, Heroes come and go, but idiots are forever. Adam, what's wrong? I'm a frog. <laughs> yes, a frog. Like the one you kiss. Get a handsome prince. I know the I'm a frog line is obviously iconic, but is there a line that sticks out to you the most when you think back about the movie? There's so many good ones. I love when Aisha's like activating power beam and then turns on a flashlight. <laughs> like, yes. You know, so uh, I don't remember a line though, uh, other than I'm a frog. That's the only thing I remember. <laughs> uh, or it's morphin' time. We did it's morphin' time down on that cliff or whatever in that, whatever that was, that construction site. Like I remember it felt like 90 takes of it's morphin' time. How many times do you think you've said that in your life? Oh gosh. Too many There's to count. <laughs> no way to count. There's no way to count. <laughs> Too many you know, to count. Time to boogie with the bear. My favorite line was, it's time to boogie with the bear. <laughs> yes. I love that one. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. appropriate for yeah. Aisha. <laughs> she you was so what? sassy, I loved it. If you go watch the movie, everyone's holding the morpher like this. Yeah. And I'm holding it like that. I never Everybody. noticed that. And so Everybody someone showed me, it. and I was like, yeah, that's so weird. And and the only reason I know that stuff is because fans, and that's the only thing they want to ask. Why are we doing the morph <laughs> this way? I'm like, I, I learned through the fans. They point out stuff that you didn't even realize. It's true. We'd never notice. They noticed everything. One of my favorites comes from you when you were talking about all the things that you missed while you were trapped in the egg, and you say oh, the yes. Brady Bunch reunion. <laughs> yeah, the Brady Bunch reunion. <laughs> <laughs> all the things that I have missed the Black Play, the Brady Bunch reunion. I read that that, that was an ad lib. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think I was aware of what the Brady Bunch meant. I had to have it explained. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was in the script, actually. Yeah, it was. The other line I never understood was, uh, I got a Charlie horse. That's oh, yeah, Charlie I'm horse. Yeah. yeah. I've, never, I've never heard anybody say Charlie horse. You any idea what it's like to be locked up in a rotten egg for 6,000 years? It's boring. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, I've had a Charlie horse since the Renaissance. Do you guys remember like what the biggest change was from the original script to the movie? Hulk and Skull really were working for the bad guys at first. And then it, it got into a tug of war because they wanted to do other things with Bulk and Skull. 
So they were like, yeah, you can't have bad guys. And like, what the hell am I supposed to do with these guys? I don't know. Well, I'm the ADs on the show. <laughs> but that's what it was. We were, we were legitimately we'll working. Put them to work. Ivan. We were working for Ivan News. Everyone. I know on the original, like the original construction fight, we were supposed to be fighting rats or big, like big rats. But they, yeah. when they did the test, it looked like, um, just like, like it looked like funny you see little the zipper. Like, yeah, you it see was the zipper. totally. Yeah, and so that's how the ooze men were born, which became a, a much better situation. Yeah. All right, pinheads, the stealth eagle's about to fly. Ditto with a swooping swallow. What I will say is that the original script had a lot more, I think, personal funny moments for each character. But once the movie started going, we lost a lot of the personal, you know, funniness that each ranger had w w would have been. But overall, it, it obviously turned out great. But I wish we would have kept some of that funny stuff because it, it really gave a time for each character to really shine. That's Hollywood, though. You know, it's unfortunate, but I think just do with the timing too. You have a long script and they're like, oh, let's just cut that. And you're like, oh. Steve, that's happened too on the, on the movie. I know there was things that were cut from everybody. Totally. Just to maybe make Tons it short, great, I don't know. Great fight scenes that were cut and training yeah. sequences. Like yeah. the whole thing with Dulcia that was right. shot in that Japanese palace right. or whatever, yeah. that all disappeared. Like, I mean, yeah. there was all kinds of really yeah. cool I stuff. I remember shooting stuff where I was, uh, trying to catch flies with chopsticks <laughs> my character got frustrated and then i pulled out my ranger gun and started shooting them <laughs> you know like i was going to be the quick draw or something <laughs> so it all changed yeah i think the biggest thing that was was kind of the dividing factor was that saban they would make the television show and then 20th century fox came on and did the movie but 20th century fox really didn't know a lot of the intricacies of what these characters were in the television show it's like how do you not know what to do with bulk and skull they're so such a pivotal part of this show it was just two different companies moving in two different directions uh, do you want us to take another whack at it how about taking another quack at it i have a question for many years I remember you walking on the gravel. The shoes are super hard. What did you feel about those shoes that when you wore? <laughs> well, they, I'm, I'm they, a fan they were now. quite dangerous. And, um, I know. Yeah. The funny thing was that the accident I had was when I'd taken them off. But the reason for the accident, in truth, was they'd made this step out of polystyrene. And the polystyrene step broke under me. If I'd <laughs> had my brothers, I should have sued their asses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I always wonder. It would not have been Saban's Power Rangers. Rangers. It would have been Paul Freeman's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of having to go to the hospital to see if I broke my ankle, because the foot just turned over. And That's I got true. all that makeup on. So they couldn't, it took an hour and a half to get it off. So we went to this clinic and they had to wheel me in in a wheelchair. I still had some of the gear on and all this blue face with the bones and things sticking out of it. Like, what has this man done to his face? <laughs> Some sort of pervert. Something weird's going That's on. That's awesome. The clinic we'd gone to, which was just a small clinic in a high street somewhere in Sydney, um, didn't have an x-ray machine. So they wheeled me out and up the high street through all the shoppers to another clinic. I was getting this, oh, ooh, wow, ooh, what's he done? What a... <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I didn't hear that story. <laughs> If you didn't. Well, thank you. <laughs> Johnny, have you heard that story? No, actually, I did not. Oh, I know. We're all sitting here like glued to the Zoom. <laughs> I know. We're loving it. We're loving if it. If we had social media, Paul, you would have been everywhere on social media. Darcia, that miserable, manipulating, loathsome she devil of a witch. If she leads them to the great power, everything will be ruined. Was Paul the first, like, original Power Rangers villain then? Because a lot of them were, like, reused stuff from the show, right? Oh, that's a really good question. Lord, so Zed. Lord Zed was the first original one, then Paul Freeman was the one, no, the, the next one after that. Let's talk about this. Uh, Guess not. Uh. Oh, I was gonna say, I was impressed with Steve. I tell people and brag about him because, you know, he, he don't he don't talk about himself more, but he's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is a really huge thing in the in the industry. But I remember the fight scene filming it over and over and over again. And I remember looking at Steve going, oh, he's got to do all that stuff in those heaviest boots that he would just do these flips and kicks. <laughs> 
I was pretty impressed. With Thanks, man. It, 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 it was a choice that I regretted because, you know, when I looked at him, I'm like, oh, that looks cool. Edgy with the comp with the Doc Martin combat boots and the shorts and the and the plaid shirt, you know. But man, I didn't realize I'd have to do take after take after take of flips and kicks with those things on. And, you know, you, did like, it. you know, doing it with an extra like, you know, 10, five pounds on you, you know, it's like not yeah, easy. Yeah, you did it for sure. Thanks, man. This this movie had so many good like suits, props, memorabilia. Did you guys hold on to anything? And if it's nearby, would you be willing to show us? Don't don't admit it. They want it back. I know that like David said that him and a couple of others had gotten their their ninja costumes because we shot the ninja oh, stuff wow, yeah. at the end. So once they got to go home, you know, fly back to America that night, they just took them. But <laughs> I didn't take anything. I regretted that I didn't take anything. <laughs> Oh, very good. Oh, nice. Wow. Nice. Wow. I can't. I can't find my original Power Ranger boots. I have them, but the paint's coming off. I saved my boots and a few Zordon crystals. I had the boots, yeah. gloves, and you had it, your boots. Yeah, I have a pair oh, of boots. Oh, like they had a uh, for a while. I don't know. You know, Planet Hollywood in Florida had the Black Ranger suit from the movie, but it was missing. <laughs> that. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. I like it. Like, I'll take that. I'll take that. I, yeah. I hope there's a white ranger suit out there that's missing a boot. <laughs> yeah, this by Gabriel Junkart. Wow. Oh, you've Steve, got it all. Steve knows. Steve knows. He's got everything. He's got talk after. <laughs> that's awesome. Paul, did you keep anything? I think I've got. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I've got one of the plaster heads. I've got a couple of plaster heads knocking around somewhere. Paul, I'll buy it off you. Buy it off you. He said, I'll buy it off you. I got five Steve, you know you would have asked that question. Don't even lie. Steve would have asked that question right now. I would not have. I always wanted I'm the serious. draws. You always wanted some of the U's. Yeah, it seemed fun. I think I've got one of those jars somewhere. But I have... I'll buy it off you. <laughs> 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 the jars of ooze, those are so, those were cool. I remember that, the slime. I thought it was funny you told the kids to throw it in their parents' faces. <laughs> <laughs> Take it home in cases. If your parents try to stop you, just throw it in their faces. Oh, yeah! <laughs> did you keep anything from the movie? Do you have anything in your house? No, not from the movie. I, I do have a few things from the television series. In fact, there's a few things that are within reach now, like plastic <laughs> food from the juice bar you know, cakes and plastic donuts and weird stuff that I got off of Mark Richardson. Oh, nice. You star. <laughs> Catch you on the flip side. Why, uh, why do you guys think that no one in Angel Grove was able to identify the Power Rangers who all hung out in their colors? They sc skydived in their colors. They went rollerblading in their colors. They Nobody had to be colorblind. <laughs> Mark and Skull are, are your typical Angel Grove citizens. I think you know the answer. That's funny. Well, I have this little section called Fact or Fiction. Facts about this movie, we'll talk about what the actual story is behind them. Sure. So the first one is for Jason Narvey here. Paul and Jason felt underused in the movie, so the producers gave them the opportunity to be a part of the crew on the series. Paul directed a few episodes while Jason was AD. True-ish. Paulie was, was, was assistant director for first unit of the TV show, and I was assistant director for the second unit for the TV show. But Paul ended because... up directing some, some, some episodes, right? Paul ended up directing a few episodes, um, not in Australia, but he ended up directing four episodes, I think, later yeah. down the line when I remember uh, that. When all the Rangers were, were shrunk down in, as into children. But okay. Paul, but Jace, I just think that they had so much talent. They had so much organization, at least in my opinion. And that's why I think it was great when Paul directed and when Jason was there, because when you're a director, it's it, you need to lead the actors, they would always come up and say, hey, you know, give you action verbs or, you know, just do it like this so it made you real feel comfortable. So I think they had a lot of talent that they weren't using. So it wasn't so much like, oh, we're sorry, here's some episodes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't think it was, yeah, we're but, sorry, but yeah. No, 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 so what happened was, um, we because the, the movie ran long, so the network needed shows. And um, there was a, a producer over there assisting with 20th Century Fox in the movie. He was a huge advocate of Vulcan Skull from the word go. And so when they needed episodes, he grabbed us and said, hey, um, I know what you guys have done. I know what your talents are. Can you help me get these episodes shot for the network? 
So that's that's how it happened. Yeah, back then it came on daily, but even then it couldn't keep up. So they went back and showed a lot of reruns. So I would imagine, like, when you're five years old, that must be confusing because it's like, first you see the one Red Ranger, then you see a new Red Ranger. So it, it was it's very interesting watching the show back when Walter Austin and Twee left because it's very clear that the, they were like just using like stock footage of them. <laughs> But at the time, I didn't realize at all. It was hard filming that because when I was there, I was mostly put me in the middle of filming it. And for me, being a young filmmaker, young uh, actor, there was things I did not understand because it was just a matter of just leaving. It's a, a matter of us working harder. Me, I'm stuck in the middle. Now we got to finish these episodes. That process of yeah. let's figure out how we're going to get new people as an actor became double work. We've already worked 12 hours a day. So we need a red shirt over shoulder. Yeah. You know, we need a yellow. We need a black shirt over that shoulder. That first so couple really of months. Confusing. It yeah. was confusing. And it was really hard for me to understand how that process worked. They taught me a lot. I learned a lot. You know, But bringing in these three guys was that easy because they didn't have to replace anyone with different personalities. You know, they became their own personalities. And I'm, I'm yeah, sure it's great. not easy, but I thought all three of them did a really fantastic job and it was great to see them in the movie because it was I, a big thing. Johnny's line, I'm a frog. <laughs> I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> he, he improvised that, that was his line, he made it yeah. up. He made like, that he line up. I did what's wrong? I'm a frog. <laughs> yes, a frog, like the one you kiss get a handsome prince oh yeah the frog line i have the old script somewhere um but uh we went through a bunch of changes you know went through different dulcia went through so many different things and uh yeah i just remember uh a little overwhelmed a little disappointed and some things being taken away and I thought, you know, whatever, let me ask the director. And then I was like, ah, can I just be bummed out about having the frog? It's not nearly as cool as these <laughs> other animals. And uh, he was like, well, let's let's do like the script says first. And uh, we did. And then he was like, all right, well, what's your idea? And then the idea was just to be bummed out. <laughs> I felt like I got to do something, yeah. you know, original. You know, I, I didn't, I never really tried to break free from the script. I always tried to do what was there. Um, you know, and so it was just that uh, it was just a chance. It was a good ad lib, man. It was a good job. I remember yeah, that about the from the movie. It stuck with everyone forever. To be in harmony with a sacred animal spirit is to have the force of the ninjetti. So Gabrielle Fitzpatrick left, and then Mariska Hargitay came in, but mm -hmm. then she got fired, and then Gabrielle came back. Yep. So I, I know this is true, because I, I saw Mariska talking about it on like a late night yeah, show. Yeah, I did too. Remember? I was going to be the queen. You were the queen in a Power Rangers movie. That was me. Look at that. I think her name was Dulcia or Dulcinea, uh -huh. but I was so excited because I was going to Australia to play this queen. Yeah. I, I was there for November uh -huh. and then December. And right. then we were getting close to Christmas, and they had me on hold a lot. And finally, around December 21st, I said, hey, guys, this is great, but you kept me on hold too long. I got to go. It's Christmas. Yeah. I think that's only fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go home. I fly home in December, uh, January 3rd. I call them. I'm like, OK, I'm ready. And they're like, sweetie, you're good. Don't worry about it. Really? Uh, yes, and they fired me. Wow. Do you guys remember like filming with her? Yeah. yeah we, we remember we filming with her like two months. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was it was kind of crazy because Gabrielle had gotten the role, and I just remember that after months and months of her preparing for this part, she got sick, and then one day Mariska showed up, and she was perfectly sweet, but we were in the middle of filming, so it was kind of like she just got thrown into a, a moving freight train. And we filmed with her for about a month or, or two, and then we yeah. went on a, a holiday break, and when we came back, Gabrielle was back. So it was just the weirdest, craziest thing. Um, but it was nice getting to know her and working with her, and she was su like yeah. she was so fun, and she was super funny. And but I yeah, that's that, totally yeah. a fact. Yeah, yeah, I never knew that. Whatever. She said yeah. she pretty much got fired because she wanted to take a holiday, and they said no, you can't take a holiday, so oh. she bailed out. Yeah, oh. it's so crazy. It's a, but we yeah we I worked never knew that all now. holidays. <laughs> we should have told her. When you're on Power Rangers, you will work through all holidays. <laughs> <That's not what laughs> you like get one day someone. off per month. <laughs> He's so handsome. Why, thank you. Yeah, I read that you were seven hours in the makeup chair and that you had to swish like 
black juice before takes so that your tongue would stay purple. That's right. That was something we realized after I'd made up the rest of my face and suddenly there's a little, little pink, well, a big pink tongue sticking out. <laughs> so we had to do something about it. The seven hours was the first time when we put all the pieces on that took seven hours. We got it down to about four hours in the end. Wow. But I was still starting work four hours before the rest of you guys. Yeah. God bless you for that. Well, That's I funny. think one of the burning questions that I'm sure a lot of people ask, but I'm going to ask as well, is did anyone date in real life? Because the chem was always there. <laughs> Johnny and I dated for a while, but it didn't work. John, <laughs> Johnny and Jason. No. Uh, Jason, I, I mean, you never told me. It's, they I held mean, that. They held that. Holly and I were married, clearly. <laughs> there's, there's fanfic about all of you. <laughs> yeah. No, None I mean, of it, it, at least yeah. I don't know of it. We all met somebody significant while we yeah. worked. Yeah, we, you work together with people for like 12 hours a day. When you're working with somebody like, you know, grueling hours like that. Sometimes the last thing you want to do after <laughs> get done with work is hang out with them. You know what I mean? Like I never go home and get some sleep. I gotta be up at five a.m. You know what I mean? I got no time to date anybody. You know? I like to refer so. to Schreier as my first ex-wife. I heard you're in line to be arranging yourself one of these days. Nah, that's impossible. Hey, anything's possible. You really think so? I know so. Well, I. Th I think we are kind of nearing the end here. Is there anything else you guys uh, want to discuss? Any questions for each other? Um, I was just happy of the, the cast joined and you know everyone stepped into what they did. When I started the show, I never knew what it was all about. And I think everyone that did it was very passionate about it. I mean, really were. Everyone took their martial arts serious. Karen looked good. Johnny, you did your stuff. Paul, we were excited to have you. I don't know. I was just happy to see it come together and and, uh, and here we are so many years later that we have this platform. We're like in a weird state right now and the whole world has changed. And uh, you know, we we, uh, we hope everyone gets through, but I know this stuff gets me away from reality for a little bit. And I think that's what, you know, everyone's doing out there is to get away from reality a little bit. One thing I'd like to say is that I thought um, this whole business of doing the comic cons, which Power Rangers introduced me to, uh, has has been a sort of a revelation. I've met uh, such extraordinary, wonderful people over the years. I'm very moved by doing them now, when by the sort of people who turn up who need us to be there. And, and look, you guys who I've worked with in the Comic Cons have been so kind and gentle and sweet with these with the audience. I, it's been a it's been a lesson. It's been wonderful. Thank you. It's such a blessing. I mean, I think like with us, it's it was one of those, it was honestly an adventure within an adventure. We got to go to Sydney, Australia and film this movie and be a part of this, you know, television show. And I think all kids at some point in their life, they pretended to be a superhero. And we actually got to be that. I remember tying a towel around my neck and riding my big wheel. <laughs> and, and we actually got to do a version of that. And and the fact that, you know, it's been 25 years and people still watch this movie and they still love it. And and, and when we get to meet them, it, it's such a big part of their life, but now they pass it on to their kids. We feel so blessed to, to be a part of that and, and to have them in our lives. You know, Power Rangers was this, this moment that we just gave kids a little bit of escapism. But we also kind of showed them that anybody can be a hero. I think fandom is beautiful because it gives people a, a way to come together in a way that's active, that creates communities, which is in and of itself heroic. Finding a place for yourself, for other people like you, for people that are different than you. Um, and to find something you guys can celebrate that is constructive and loving. It's escapism in difficult times. Um, and it's kind of, um, uh, aspiring in regular times. So I kind of hope that's the legacy that Power Rangers leaves behind. I just want to add one other thing I remember, which was that, you know, I used to have this charity that we set up for a school in Uganda. We passed it on to two of our younger trustees now. But um, <laughs> the point of this is you were all, all of you individually, very supportive. And a lot of the fans were very supportive over the years. And it did the school in Uganda, which is now a new school building and very successful, still going strong. And that's really a, a lot to do with Power Rangers. That's, that's nice. great, man. Wow, yeah. that's some real hero stuff. 
Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I want to thank you guys all so much for joining us. This has been a dream come true. I've always wanted to say this. It's morphin' time. It was thank fun. You, yeah. Yeah. I know, because had fun, a good Ash. Thank you for Yeah, having. we had a great time. Thank you, Ash, for putting yeah, this together. Good. We appreciate it. Good seeing everybody. Loved everyone. Bye, yeah, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. For more interviews like this, stick to ET Online. I'm Ash Carlson, and I'll see you guys next time.